That full moon is called the cool moon, or the long night moon. Uh, and it's a good sign. What? Can't hear you guys. Louder. Louder. Who said that? Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, the, I mean, we don't have any amplification, so uh, if you can get, you, can, you could get closer over here, actually. Anything you can do to get closer is probably a good idea. I'm reading from here. <laughs> uh, that may be better. Yeah, I have to sit down. I can't yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 25 years ago, Gret and I moved from San Francisco to this valley with a four-year-old daughter named Maya and a black cat named Pasolini, <laughs> who's buried right in front of that door uh, under a black granite circle. Pasolini was Diane Prima's cat that we brought from San Francisco. We came here in the summer, but then we encountered the winter of 1993, which turned out to be the worst in, some people say, in a hundred years, um, with huge drifts of snow up to the rafters and bitter cold, and we were not at all prepared for it. Um, we had no money and no prospects, and uh, some of the people in this room helped us survive that first winter. Um, and we had a winter solstice gathering. Um, as I remember, that first one was very small. Um, I think it was our, Maya and her friend Rowan did a little show, and uh, that was about it. <laughs> and then they got, they started to get bigger and they started to get more raucous. <laughs> and we had fire leaping. And um, I, one year, I don't remember what year it was, I took Mike Bidlow over the fire and he came down and broke his leg. And Carol Lee had to take care of him for a while. Um, so, uh, and, and we've been doing it every year ever since then for 25 years. One person who's not here tonight who I really wanted, who helped us, Tremendously, I don't think we would have survived that first winter without her, is Jillian Jagger, who's a great sculptor. Um, and she helped us in, in many different ways. She didn't know us from Adam. She was just, uh, she just welcomed us and for some reason wanted us to survive. Um, but I wanted to thank her for all she did for us. And, another, and the other thing that got us through was these winter solstice. Uh, it was a poet, Diane De Prima, who taught us how to, who taught us to celebrate the winter solstice and the equinoxes and the cross quarter days. Um, and Diane had lived here uh, in in the past. I just saw her referred to as the world's leading anarcho hermeticist poet. <laughs> <laughs> Funny no. distinction there. Um, and she and as she talked, Brett and I many many other things. So I just wanted to read a, a poem from Diane um, called "First Snow Kerhonkson." This is when she was living in this valley. This, then, is the gift the world has given me, you have given me. Softly the snow, cupped in hollows, lying on the surface of the pond, matching my long white candles, which stand at the window, which will burn at dusk while the snow fills up our valley. This hollow, no friend will wander down, no one arriving brown from Mexico, from the sunfields of California, bearing pot, they are scattered now, dead or silent, or blasted to madness by the howling brightness of our once common vision. And this gift of yours, white silence, filling the contours of my life. The times are dark now, darker than they've been for a long time. Diane taught us not to uh, despair. She thought despair was cowardly. Um, 
but to continue the age-old rituals, however simple, even as we fight politically, the little things matter. And what we do together matters. Just one more short poem from Diane's <coughs> Revolutionary Letters. This is Revolutionary Letter number 33. How far back are we willing to go? That seems to be the question. The more we give up, the more we will be blessed. The more we give up, the further back we go. Can we make it under the sky again in moving tribes that settle, build, move on and build again, only, only, owning only what we carry? Do we need the village, division of labor, a friendly potlatch a couple of times a year, or must it be merely a cybernetic civilization, which may or may not save the water, but will not show us our root or our original face, return us to the source, how far forward is back are we willing to go after all? Do you hear?